It's, it's a lot easier riding as a professional, I would say. Like to go out in a four-year-old maiden there, three miles over fences, first time out, and green horses around you. You could be on a green horse, green jockeys around you. For three miles, you know, it takes a lot of riding, so, uh, you know, riding in handicaps as a professional is, is an awful lot easier than going around point to points, you know. I'm in mean, Barry's three days a week. I arrived there around 20 past seven on a Wednesday, Friday and a Saturday. Um, everyone there knows their job. It's a great routine we have. Very straightforward. You know, if I was a racehorse, I'd like to live there. Um, State-of-the-art facility. First lot this morning is Espanito Bello. Um, he's, a, he's a great servant to the yard. Uh, he won the Leinster National last year and he led a couple of grade one horses in all their work, so um, he's a brilliant horse to have. My father was an amateur jockey, William. He was quite successful. He won the Fox Hunters at Cheltenham on Lovely Citizen and the Latouche. And my brother Alan is going down the same route. Um, he mightn't have taken as much as an interest as I did early on, but when he did, he was just focused on race horses and that's all he wanted to know. Um, so he's an amateur now as well. He did a good year last year. He had 10 winners point to point. And so um, he's improving the whole time. I've um, ridden against him a few times. So um, he's doing the same thing. He's started college now last year. He's going into his second year in college in Cork. So um, hopefully he gets going as well. Um, my uncle Eugene trains. My grandfather Owen, he started the family off. He bred horses and owned horses all his life. And obviously, Maxine, my cousin, rides and Owen, my cousin, used to ride as well. The way it got the better of him. My aunt, Marie McCartan, is in Bally Phillips Stud with her husband, Paul, and they're doing very well. My father retired in 2005, and I have a brief memory of being at a pint of pint and seeing him in Trevor Hemmings' colours. And that's my only memory of him riding. Um, so that's probably my earliest memory. And I started riding ponies then. And I was allergic to ponies early on. I couldn't breathe or my eyes would all swell up. So I suppose I wasn't too keen on it for a while. And then I got antihistamines and I suppose just got used to it. And started riding ponies properly from nine years of age on. Tony the Pony was my first one. And then Murphy Brown, who Maxine got going and he was an amazing pony. It's hugely important to have a good pony growing up. Because um, I won plenty on him and he filled me with confidence. and. He wasn't easy now, he'd run away at me a lot and things like that, but you know, I did everything from hunting, hunter trials, eventing, show jumping, dressage, everything on him. Um, and he was amazing, won plenty of competitions and dad used to bring me everywhere riding him. Um, so I started riding ponies then and I suppose I have fond memories starting secondary school or even in sixth class, and every Friday night during the winter, me and Dad used to go down to Ballyrafter in Lismore. He'd collect me from school around three or four o'clock, and we'd go down with two ponies, and he'd be there all night riding, and from 60 centimetres up to a metre or a metre ten. And for a finish, I was getting spare rides and everything below there. I thought I was a great lad, but um, you know that was kind of the measure of Dad now to go down there every Friday night. He'd milk the cows early and we wouldn't be home till one or two o'clock in the morning. He'd be up milking the cows again the following morning. So um, that all stands to me. And do Hallow Pony Club and do Hallow Hunt then as well. You know, I did all that and eventing Ireland and show jumping. and um, Yeah, I had a great upbringing. I uh, started riding out race horses then, I suppose, around 12, 13. A few of the quieter ones at home. And um, that's where it all kicked off with the race horses. You know, obviously I was lucky, I had Maxine and Owen there to look up to at home and obviously Dad and Eugene and everyone telling me what to do. Um, Mick O'Callaghan was in the yard for as long as I can remember as well. He was a, he's a great horseman and he was a good jockey in his day, so um, they were hard on me now, and it, but it stood to me. And uh, at around 15 then I spent the summer with Enda Bulger and I stayed at my aunt Marie McCartan in Bally Phillip, So. She was very good to drop me over and collect me to, from Enda's every day and uh, learned an awful lot with Enda, you know, he's a, a great taskmaster. I, I remember the first day I was there, he took me off down, we, we all took a lot down to the woods and, uh, 
you know, jumping drains and banks and everything. And my first day there, I was still quite green. And I think I was riding some three year old and then they said, come on, so follow me. And he took me off through briars and hedges and he was riding some hunter or something. And he was just testing me, make sure I was behind him. And uh, sure I cut the arms off myself and everything. But um, Enda was brilliant. He was kind of the first person that told me, you know, I suppose at home, listening to dad and, and Eugene and everyone, they'd always say, oh, ride long and all that. But remember one morning and they said, you know, if you put up your stirrups, you'll, you'll be able to hold the horses and ride better. So I came back after that summer riding shorter and everyone was kind of looking at me saying, who is this fella think he is? But uh, it was the best thing that ever happened to me down there. And um, came back to Eugene's then, obviously still in school. So I got my bumper license when I was 16 and I rode a horse called Crazy Games for Eugene and Clamel. That was my first ride. I got my pint to pint license when I turned 17 and I rode, I was 17 in February and I rode a mare for my father who he bred called Milano Citizen and we kind of ran her every fortnight and she wasn't much good but I was finishing third or fourth or fifth and um, that was the end of that season so my first full season then the first Sunday in Castown Gagan I rode a horse called the Decent Excuse who was a, a yard stalwart really he was owned by the local Kilchanik Syndicate, my grandmother was involved in and yeah he won the open lightweight, wasn't really expecting it but came down to the last with Jamie Codd and won and that was that was a great day to get my first winner, my father was there so it was brilliant and he went out and won again the following weekend in Loch Ray. and then the following weekend I won on a mare called Wilco's Diana in Rack Cannon for Eugene and she was actually my first winner on the track as well. She won the Mare's Hunter Chase in Mallow, my local track. Um, so that was a brilliant start to that year. And I was doing my leave insert that year as well. So <clears throat> in the springtime, I didn't ride that much. Um, so I finished that year with five winners. And the following season then, um, I was champion novice. I had 16 winners. I didn't ride my first winner until New Year's Day. And um, got going then I had a treble in Kildare in February um, that was brilliant a brilliant day to have a treble it was amazing and following a few weekends then I had a double in Bandon and a double in, I had a winner f nearly every weekend for about six weeks and I was champion novice that year I had 16 winners and I think I rode for two or three seasons after that as well um, but I was I had a lot of injuries I broke my collarbone a couple of times in my wrist and just never got a clean run at it, but I think I had 250 rides pint to pint and 34 winners and got a lot of support from a lot of good people, owners and trainers. Um, pint to pint is the best crowning you can get, you know, three miles over fences and four year olds to ten year olds. Um, you know, it's an unbelievable grounding. Look at Derek O'Connor and Jamie Codd and James Hannon and all these lads every weekend and following them around and you know, there's, there's no stone unturned, no inch given. Any of the amateurs would hold their own on the track. Um, so it was an amazing ground and a very competitive, but it's, uh, it's very rewarding. Like I remember even going back when I was in college there, I had two rides for Ian McCarthy and they both won, but um, Ian's a great lad. He's doing a lot of good things, but remember Ian used to go down to Boulta crazy time in the morning from the Curra. He used to be in Boulta for half seven. So he'd be leaving his place, I'd say, four or five o'clock in the morning. But anyway, I used to leave Dublin and meet him blowing Boulta. And I'm sure, I used to leave Dublin four or five o'clock, meet Ian and Boulta at half seven. I said, geez, what am I doing this for? But went down, rode the horse, school him round over fences and back up. I was back in college for the first lecture around nine o'clock. Um, but the following weekend, the horse went and won the four year old in Bandlinus. So, you know, if you put in the work, uh, with these horses, like you see with Derek O'Connor, what he was saying, he's go down to Bootle and school all these horses and he had great success from it. So if you put in the work and um, you're riding for the right people and put the work into the horses, you know, you, you get your rewards from it. And the following summer then I spent in Joseph O'Brien's. I spent two summers there and that was great as well. I loved working there. Joseph was very nice and very easy to work for and learned an awful lot there. Um, tidied me up an awful lot. Obviously I'm quite tall, so um that really tidied me up a good bit in between Enders and Joseph's and um at home then as well, you know, listening to Mick and things like that. Um I remember I used to be trotting we used, at home we trot down Pasco Throw pub down to the Gallop 
And sure, I was getting awful down off Mick and Owen and everyone. I'd be looking at myself in the window, standing up in the stairs, trying to look as tidy as I can. But um, I said, you know, if I could look like a jockey anyway, even if I can't ride, at least I'll be able to look like one. Um, and, you know, I think that's important too. Like, if you can look tidy and presentable and if on a horse you, you look well, um, you'll eventually come across one that wins. And if you look all right when it wins, you know, people might think you can ride even if you can. So... Um, I was always tall, so I was always, you know, I had to work harder to be that bit more stylish, but um, I'm glad I did. Um, still in school, my mother and my grandmother and all my family really would be, um, you know, sticklers for education and they, you know, made sure I, I studied as well and uh, studied hard and got a good enough leaving cert. And then I suppose I was at a crossroads. I didn't know whether to, whether to take a year out and focus on the racing or go to college and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in college but um, I filled out the CAO anyway and um, yeah I had a good, good I had a nice few points so I had a good option and you know mum and dad were really pushing me to go to college and thank god I did because if I didn't I'd say I'd never have gone back if I took a year out. So I went to UCD then and did animal science it's a part of the agriculture and science it's a level 8 course in UCD so I was there Monday to Friday and coming home at the weekends, riding out on a Saturday. Could be with Eugene or Mikey Kendi or Paul Cashman or someone. And pint of pinting on, on Sundays and I used to get the train back up then after pint of pinting on a Sunday. And during the week then I used to go to Gordon Elliott in the morning. Um, I spent a summer full time, I spent two summers full time in Gordon Elliott's in working mornings and evenings. And um, that was a great experience as well. And very, Gordon's been very good to me since I turned professional and um, so that really stood to me and I used to go in there every Wednesday during the week while I was in college um, so I was able to combine the two quite well and then Covid came so third year of college I was at home and um, that was tricky now because I was riding out every day and I wasn't doing a whole pile of college and you know I was college was tough going like I was doing modules like genomics, biostatistics, all chemistry and biology and microbiology and a lot of animal nutrition, animal physiology and stuff like that and sure I was riding out every day, I wasn't watching any lectures and things like that but um, so yeah so the Covid brought me back and I, I was riding out in Mikey Kendi's, Paul Cashman's, Eugene's and all these places schooling for anyone I could trying to get going again point to pointing and um, fourth year then um, back up in Dublin and I started going into William Mullins as a day a week and loved every minute of that and finished college last year then 2022 in May finished my exams and started going into William Mullins as that summer and was really enjoying that um, things were going well as an amateur I was getting plenty of rides and bumpers and things like that um, but it was always in the back of my mind whether I should turn professional or not. And once I finished college then, you know, it was, it was now or never really. I first rode for Barry in an open lightweight in Drumahan on a horse called Time Waits for No One. It was actually Derek O'Connor got me to ride. Alan Fleming rang Derek and he was going somewhere else. So he put me forward. And it was a three runner race. And I finished second to It Came to Pass, who Maxine won on and went on to win in Chetlam. Um, and I rode that horse again in a hunter's chase in Punchestown and down Patrick. And that was the first time I rode for Barry, but I hadn't much dealings with him then. May two years ago, I was bringing in the cows with my father, milking the cows, and I was flicking down through the entries for the bumper in Punchestown. And I seen Barry had a horse entered, and you know, I just rang him for the ride, nothing to lose. And he said I could ride him, and it was Marine National, and then he won, duly obliged, and Barry asked me to come in. A couple of weeks later, he rang me and asked me to come in a couple of mornings a week during the summer, and I said I would. And we got on well, and I enjoyed riding out there and got on well with everyone in the yard, and you know, an awful lot of nice horses there, and a lovely yard to be involved with. So all was going well. Um, Marine won his winners bumper in Killarney then, and Barry had a conversation with me that if I was thinking about turning professional, he'd support me. Um, so I thought about it for about a month, thought long and hard about it and spoke to plenty of people about it. It wasn't an easy decision because my background is in point of pointing as an amateur and things were going well, there was a career to be made there. 
as an amateur so it wasn't an easy decision but my weight was good and I was finished college so it was now or never so I decided to turn professional and yeah that's where it all kicked off my first winner was for Robert Tyner in Sligo a mare called Dangan de Champ I had one ride it was an all chase card and Robert wouldn't send a mare to Sligo if he didn't think she'd have a chance so um, that was brilliant because Robert was very good to me as an amateur I had a couple of winners for him as an amateur as well that was my first winner in the middle of September, I think, or the end of September. And the following week was Listol. And on the Friday of Listol, I had a double. I won the big hurdle for Terence O'Brien on a horse called Magna Glory, who was owned by the Sheehans, who were long-time family friends. My father would have rode for them as well, so that was brilliant. And I won the bumper for Mikey Kennedy and Connor Murphy, who supported me from the start, so that was a great day. And that was the Friday. The following Monday, I had a double for Barry in Roscommon and it was my first ride in a great address. Um, I was still claiming seven so in fairness to Barry he was very good to put me up on Enniscary and he won the grade three and I had another winner for him as well on low style so yeah that was a brilliant start you know I was only a professional in a month and still claiming seven and I won a big handicap and a grade three and um, kicked off from there. It's rare in that I rode Marine and he's two bumpers and then I turned professional in the meantime, so our careers have kind of developed together. I won his maiden hurdle on him in Punchestown. And then he went to the Royal Bond in early December. Um, I think I was still claiming five, even if I might have been claiming seven. So to ride in a grade one, even. I had two rides in grade ones that day, um, the Drinmore as well. So to ride in them as a five or seven pound claimer, you know, is probably doesn't happen too often. So I. Couldn't believe my luck. Very privileged to come across them horses so early on in my professional career. And I have Barry to thank for that, and he put the faith in me. And obviously, I was the only one to have ever ridden Marine, and I know him very well from at home, and he's an amazing horse. Um, so I knew him better than anyone. And I remember it rained all that morning, and I kind of thought any chance I had was going away from me. Only second run over hurdles in the Royal Band, but. Um, I said I'd ride him for luck down the inside and he jumped and travelled and you know I got good splits when I needed them and um, I got a split down to the last and I thought this was easy and then he put down at the last and I just got up and I wouldn't change it for the world anyway, it made it more dramatic and um, to my surprise really I wasn't sure if they were coming but my parents were there so that was great and uh, yeah first grade one to ride in and to win it was a special memory, that, not one that happens too often. And to go out and ride in the next grade one then, um, yeah, it's uh, very, very lucky to be involved with that horse and to be in the position I am. Goodland ran in a main hurdle the same weekend as the Royal Bond and I fell off him at the first. He just jumped it a bit big and I fell off. But it was all for luck. He went and he won his main hurdle at Christmas and then he was set up for the grade one at the Dublin Racing Festival to the Tanya Lacey, um, Barry's Backyard, first race of the festival, um, big crowds, great atmosphere and I think he was favourite so there was a lot of pressure involved um, but I thrived off it, loved it and he went out and kept it simple and he won. So that was my second grade one, still claiming five, um, again very very lucky to come across him you know, some people go through their whole careers looking for a grade one horse and I was professional a couple of months and I was after finding two, so um, under no illusions, you know, how privileged I have been. And rolled on to Cheltenham then with, with two live hopes in two grade ones. Wins the stairs, novice for Michael O'Sullivan. Growing up all along, um, hearing stories of Lovely Citizen in 91 and I suppose it was a massive deal at the time. And I think there was only one other Irish winner that year and um, the Lovely Citizen won the Fox Hunters and my grandfather owned them and his two sons trained and rode them so I suppose it was very special at the time and I grew up hearing about that and you know I suppose we were hearing about it so much we wanted to do it ourselves and create another story to be listened to you know it was when Maxine went on and won it then and it came to pass my brother Alan went over with him and he led him up and I flew over with Maxine then and 
that was an amazing day because you know it was it was another story and you know if we could stop listening to lovely citizen at that stage it was probably 30 years in the difference um so that was brilliant i came back down to shoot with maxine and i got a taste for cheltenham then um i was delighted for her and the whole family but at the same time i, I wish i was on the horse you know um so to get my chance to do that uh this year was 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 amazing you know I, the first race of the meeting the supreme um probably is the best atmosphere out of them all and to go there to have a ride in it first and foremost was you know a dream come true and to have a ride there as a professional in the Cheltenham festival it's what you grow up wanting to do and I suppose we thought we had a good chance um Barry was after sticking his neck out and telling everyone he'd win um in fairness I'd spoke to actually Ruby Walsh and Charlie Swan that morning I happened to meet them after riding out and they gave me good advice and yeah I was I wasn't too nervous or anything but I was quietly looking forward to it um and sure yeah it just went amazing um went very smoothly uh, jumped and traveled and kept it simple and just very very good horse I was on a cloud then after winning the supreme and you know, you'd be floating around the place. I went back into the wear room and I was on my phone and people are ringing and texting and looking at the replay a hundred times. And I had one ride left then on, in the Fred Winter for Gordon. Um, and I was lucky to stay on him actually because I was still claiming five in Ireland at the time. But over there, we didn't know I had only three pounds in England. And Gordon had me declared on him in the Fred Winter thinking I was claiming five. And I was only claiming three, so if I got beaten ahead, there would have been a problem. Ken Whelan would have been in trouble, I'd say. But yeah, I floated around for the day, went out then to ride Jazzy Matty in the Fred Winter, just to enjoy it really, and see what happened, and kept it simple again, and he won. Um, so that was just the icing on the cake, you know. To be leading rider after the first day at Cheltenham, only a few months after turning professional and still claiming, and. You know, after winning a couple of great ones, sure, I, I couldn't believe my luck really. Um, even looking back on it now, it's hard to appreciate and probably won't appreciate it until I'm finished, but um, yeah, an amazing day. We don't have a lot of spare time. You know, we're racing every weekend, Saturday and Sunday, all winter, and generally all summer as well. Um, but I have a great group of lads there that I grew up with riding in bumpers and things. and. No, we were always racing together, so we'd have something to do afterwards. Um, good group of friends at home as well. Grew up playing football and hurling with them. Um, won plenty of counties and things growing up. Not that I was any good, but I grew up with a good bunch of players. And um, yeah, I'd miss that now. I miss the camaraderie of that. But I try and get home as much as I can and stay in touch with all of them. Um, yeah. No major, I'm just into sport really, I'd watch all sports, soccer, uh, GA, rugby, F1, anything really. Last season was amazing, my first season as a professional. Got lots of support from a huge amount of trainers and owners. Um, I had 32 winners in Ireland as a professional and I think I had 8 as an amateur and I had 2 in England as well. So I had about 40 winners in my first, you know, it was a brilliant season. Um, and I finished up champion condition and you know I'd be lying if I said when I turned professional if you know the goal was to be champion conditional that season and you know I'd be lying if I said any otherwise. Um, unfortunately I broke my collarbone the week before Punchestown. Um, but you know I had so many rides and I had been lucky that you know I was in one piece until then. But now is when the hard work starts, you know, and I'm happy how things are going. My first season without a claim. Things are going very well and still getting plenty of support. Um, so, yeah, keep the head down, keep working hard and hopefully long may it last.